So CEO NetWeavers has been a member organization 15 years, <coughs> and our goal was three things. It was, CEO is a very lonely place, the top of the organization or even the top tier. You can, you can no longer talk to your peers like you did before. You can't share things, whether it be concerns about the business, personal health issues, uh, or, or uh, any other kind of a topic. Whoops, thank you. So what we wanted to do was build a trusted community. And the only way to have it be a trusted community is everybody else in the community is a giver, a pay it forward person. And so you know they're not out to take advantage or to hurt in any way, they're only there to help. So our criteria were uh, be a, a CEO or top tier of the organization and be a pay it forward person and build a community that way. Those people also want to help others. They're very busy, but they still have a desire to help others. And what we could offer them was a channel. So instead of them having to go say, well, who should I help in this big universe of opportunities, we pick people that we work with very carefully. And as you've seen this morning, and then they know, that, okay, if I plug into that, I know I'm making a real difference. So it, it was channeled to say, uh, we help figure out who to help. And finally, uh, people, as people got into it, they said the quality of the people in this group is just amazing. I mean, it's an honor to be in these conversations and, and sharing issues and problems with this group of people. And so that was our kind of our goal, and that's what we built it on. So, uh, and feedback says that those core things are still very much needed. So <coughs> more leaders are seeking ways to give back while busier than ever. Everybody's got a crazy schedule, but I see that desire growing despite how busy everybody is. Uh, our members have always said we've had mem meetings where you could come and socialize and then we had a speaker. And we'd, we didn't have enough time to do the socializing and, and really build the relationships part, but you can't ask a top tier speaker to come and only speak for 10 or 15 minutes. So we've always had that challenge. And then finally, the addition of the foundation has been very well received. Uh, it's been well supported and our members really like that. So, so that's kind of all the good parts. However, COVID did a number on us. So uh, COVID meant that we weren't meeting face to face, so we're taking away that cherished part of it. So really they were speaker meetings and done over Zoom for two years as everybody else had to do. And, and it is, with busy people, it's hard to find a speaker that is relevant to more than 20% of any organization. And in, in other organizations where you have speakers, uh, where it's face-to-face, -face, it's kind of a networking opportunity. So a lot of people feel they need to go, not necessarily hear the speaker, but for the networking. But we're not networking back to the net weaving, the, the, the deeper relationship part. So it's natural to say, I'm paying $700 a year dues for a bunch of meetings that are speaker meetings, of which I may go to none or may go to one or at most two. I'm beginning to question why I'm doing that. Uh, and that, as a result of all that, the membership has been shrinking and this year most dramatically. So we reached a pivot point. Said so we have to do something, uh, and, we, and the something is we don't want to just say that the idea is not good, we just got to find a way to pivot it. So a framework emerged, and the framework basically said the face-to-face -face meetings remain essential. That's the core of what we do, beginning to know each other, appreciate each other, uh, learning by talking about how you could help somebody else. The speaker is not central. The other organizations, plenty of opportunities to go hear speakers. And if we say we're not going to have a speaker, we don't need a facility with a room in the front with a bunch of forward-facing seats. We now have the option to say we have facilities that have round tables and they're much more oriented toward engaging conversations than, than the kind that we've been having. Um, and then finally, uh, a lot of new technologies are out there. So, because uh, all of our dues was basically going to organize the meetings and pay an executive director. So now we say there are technologies that can do a large part of that. So why don't we, and, and one is our donor platform, 
which is completely automated. The only thing you can't do is take checks from donor advised funds, and that's not a big burden. And the other one is how do we figure out a way to organize the meetings and communicate among the members, et cetera. So gee, maybe we can pivot. So the idea emerged to say, let's embed CEO NetWeavers into the foundation. And that gives us a number of benefits. First is it's an alignment. All of our good works are now under one umbrella. So that's more efficient, uh, allows us to uh, have our leadership team uh, handle all of it and, and make it you know, far less moving parts. Our target has always been to have 90% of the money that we raise go to the cause, not to expenses. And so if we focus on that, we put this structure together uh, that, that we can, we believe we can meet that goal uh, easily. And then if we say, well, you're not paying dues anymore, but you're still going to make a donation. If you want to be one of these people in this category, but now it's a donation to the foundation. So if you don't go to a meeting, you, instead of feeling bad about it, you feel good about it because you know the good you did uh, through, the, through the donation. So, and then, and we believe all of that together will give our members uh, a real sense of pride about the, uh, what they're doing, the impact they're having, the quality of the people that they're associating with. So, it's a simple kind of picture. It says that we're going to take uh, CEO NetWeavers and we're going to create a new category in the foundation. So, we've, all foundations have donors, we have donors. Ron has donors, uh, but we're going to have a member donor, and the member donors are going to be the people who want to do more than uh, contribute financially. So they want to help others, so they want to be active in mentoring or the other good works that we do, you know, not just uh, so they, and they want to do that on an annual basis. It doesn't take a mentoring somebody in our MBA program, for example, is, is an hour a month for uh, during the school year. It's eight hours a year. You know, uh, that's not a big thing to do, but it makes a huge impact and, and it's very rewarding. They want to love and value the relationships they build with a trusted community. So they want to be part of this. They want to get to know the other people that are in this program with them. Uh, and again, they want to have pride in their member donor status and impact. So for those people that say that's important to me, then uh, we believe this new program that we built is, is going to be very appealing. The qualifications are similar to CEO NetWeavers. Uh, we're going to relax. It's not just CEOs. It's the C-suite and people that have uh, substantial responsibilities uh, in corporations. And we're doing that in part because our, historically our members have said, in addition to mentoring MBA students, and the Ron Clark, the alumni scholarship winners, we would actually like to mentor up and coming executives. Those of us that have, have reached the pinnacle would like to share what we've learned and, and also mentor somebody that's, that's up and coming. So we're gonna, uh, for a couple of reasons, relax that. Again, a specified minimum annual donation uh, and then this uh, promise to, to be active. So to run that, uh, we have three chairs that have stepped up. They're all very busy people. Uh, the first is Nick Hendricks, who's here as a membership chair. And his job, so we will now get uh, referrals. We'll get people to say, I'm interested. Uh, we've automated a lot of that process with a questionnaire that people will fill out. But his job is to decide uh, who to say yes to and who to say no to based on their credentials, their capacity to mentor, the authenticity of, of why they want to become part of this program. And uh, then we have uh, Scott Ward. So it, this is our 11th anniversary of mentoring EMBA students from Kennesaw State University. Every year we mentor uh, at least 20 students from that program. They're second year students. It's part of what Kennesaw offers them. They get to say whether they want to mentor or not. And the same things you heard about the, the students that we're uh, working with here, these are typically people that are already in their career and they're trying to figure out what they want to go do. And a lot of them are getting an EMBA because they want to move up in their career. And that's been also a very rewarding program. So Scott 
is chairing that program. And then Kelly, who I mentioned, uh, is chairing our events. And our events now will be lunches and after hours, pure social, a chance in venues that allow people to just get together and talk and get to know each other, again, with, without any speakers. So, so that kind of operates as the, uh, the member donor program. Uh, the foundation needs to be more formalized. Uh, so we're going to uh, start with a board of five. So we're going to add four board members to the foundation. Uh, one of those will run the scholarship program, chair the scholarship program. So that is the front end process of getting the applications and then going through and, and with the committee deciding who to award those to and then the follow up and tracking. Uh, we need a treasurer, we, so uh, the money that comes in from the member donor program is, is in the form of donations now, so it's just the same as the other donors. Uh, there are very nominal expenses that go out of that. We need somebody to lead next year's capital campaign. And because we're relying so heavily on technology for operating efficiency, uh, we need somebody to make sure that we're using the right stuff, uh, all of it, all of its capabilities. And, and uh, so those are kind of the four key board chairs. So it's a, it's a working board, uh, but it's very rare to get a chance to join a foundation board. They're very hard to come by. And for people that would like to have that on the resume for all the right reasons, uh, we're going to create that opportunity. And, and I, will, I will be the chair for 2024. So these are our next steps. Uh, we're going to invite all of our former CEO NetWeaver members to grandfather over and become a member donor if they want to. Uh, we're going to select, as I mentioned, the four foundation board members. We're going to then open the membership to other qualified leaders. Uh, the meetup platform that we're using uh, gives us some visibility we haven't had before. And we're hoping that the uh, enthusiasm from our current and past members will cause them to think about other people that now with, these, uh, with the new criteria that they want to recommend and involve and bring to some of the sessions. Uh, we'll have a new format breakfast meeting. So uh, October 12th, Capitol Grill is a place we met for four or five years in Dunwoody. It's round tables. It's kind of perfect. They always have great breakfast food. And they've graciously uh, said we'll be happy to host you. So we're going to try and get everybody kind of together as a, as a reunion. Let's talk about it on uh, October 12th. And then the final meeting of CEO NetWaivers will be a traditional speaker meeting on the month later. 